have milk spot on your silver coins. Would you like to get rid of them? Stay tuned, we will explore what products can be used to fix the issue. In this video, we will cover the following topics. First, products and tools to use to remove milk spots. Second, should you remove them or not? Third, techniques to use. Four, I will be answering your questions. And five, conclusion and survey about what you want to see in the future. Part one, products and tools. So first, let me explain uh, the different products I will uh, attempt to use uh, in order to do this. So all of those, uh, except one, are designed for automotive use. So they are designed to polish paint and polish metal on cars. I have five categories of products here that we can use. First ones are products like these, which are specialized products for, um, for nano ceramic coated cars. Uh, so these are non-abrasive polishes. Uh, so the way it works with those, basically they have chemical cleaners in them in order to remove uh, uh, oxidation and different uh, problems on paint. And my guess is they might be uh, useful to remove milk spots. So we're gonna first uh, try those because they are non-abrasive, they would not damage the coins. A product like this is semi-abrasive. So it's, uh, it's the same type of product where it's a chemical cleaner but it's also embedded with very limited amount of, of abrasives in order to remove uh, micro scratches and paint. So it's like a, a sandpaper that would be uh, extremely fine. Um, like uh, sandpapers, the, the way they work, they have, uh, they have grit uh, numbers on them. So for example, if, you're, if you were to work wood, uh, you would be working with uh, grit numbers varying between say 40 and 320. Uh, where um, they are used on cars, it's uh, much finer. So usually it's in the range of 2,000 to 3,000 grit. Uh, this would be something like 10,000 or 15,000 grit. It's super, super fine in terms of abrasiveness. Then we have regular polishes for car. So these products are designed to shine up the paint. Uh, so again, it works by abrasives, uh, but it's very fine again. So it's probably something between 5,000 and 10,000 in terms of grit size. Um, and uh, so if you, if you can think about it, paint is very soft compared to metals. So these abrasives would not be damaging to metal. Uh, so my guess is that might work as well uh, in order to remove uh, milk spots. So we're gonna try that. Then we fall into a different category of product altogether. These are what uh, are called cleaner waxes. So basically this is an hybrid product. So it's a wax that contains abrasives. So uh, what it does basically is uh, while you're waxing the vehicle, you're also removing damage using the abrasives in the wax. Uh, so this is one of them, which is, uh, this one is uh, in terms of abrasiveness, it's in between a normal polish and a compound that I will explain a little bit later. Uh, this is another product of the same kind, except that it's uh, a better wax and a better abrasive. So it's a little bit more abrasive than the one I just showed before. Uh, these uh, three here are made by McGuire's. Uh, actually, most of my uh, polishes are made by, by McGuire's. So uh, this one here is, uh, is a compound. So a compound is more, a lot more abrasive than a polish. Uh, the, uh, the goal of the compound is to remove scratches in the paint. So uh, it, uh, the abrasiveness is much higher. It's probably in between 5,000 and 6,000, something like that in terms of abrasiveness. Um, but again, it's designed to cut into paint, not in, to cut into metal. So uh, I'm guessing that uh, these would not damage the coins either. Uh, this is a product you can pretty much get everywhere. This is a consumer grade product. So uh, uh, McGuire's uh, Ultimate Compound. Uh, so in terms of abrasiveness, it's about the same as the one I just showed you. Um, uh, this is a very inexpensive product, You're probably going to pay something like, I don't know, $8 for a bottle like this. So, uh, and you would only need like a, a drop of it to work a coin. So if, you were to, if this were to work, for example, and you were to purchase a bottle, you would probably have enough for the rest of your life in terms of uh, cleaning coins. Um, so we're going to try that one as well. And the other three I have here are, again, from Meguiar's. They are the professional grade uh, products. Uh, so uh, M110, oops, sorry. M110 and then M105, which is an older technology, but more abrasive again. And M101, which is the most aggressive, uh, aggressive compound that I have. Uh, so in terms of tools, uh, I, I do have 
polisher, uh, polisher machines and specialty pads and all type of things. But I wanted to stick with stuff that pe people would have in their homes. So the first thing people will almost always have is uh, these scrubber pads. Um, so you would never use the, uh, the, uh, the green side here, the, the scrub pad on a coin. It would really damage it. But the, uh, the, uh, the foam on the other side is safe. So uh, this would be good because it costs like a, a few pennies to use. Basically, it's super inexpensive. Uh, you can get like 10 of them at a dollar store for a dollar. So this is like 10 cents. So, so that would be my first, uh, the first tool I would use. And the other thing uh, you could use and that would work really well are microfiber towels. Um, so microfiber towels comes in many types. Uh, in many types. Uh, this one is, uh, is the cheapest I have, so these are like uh, a few pennies each. Uh, they, they're really thin and they, uh, they're not durable, but I'm guessing they would work well. And the other type would be the more standard microfiber towels. These are very old ones. These are uh, things that I've been using for years. So uh, microfiber towels uh, have a side where uh, it's very grabby and the other one which is not. So we're going to be able to use both. Okay, the other thing I did not uh, talk about yet is isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I want to give this a try, I don't think it will work. Um, alcohol, um, they have various uh, concentration. So this is the purest form, like 99% uh, and 100% are, uh, are basically pure. Um, so this works really well to remove fingerprints on coins. But I'm thinking it's not going to do anything for milk spotting, but I want to give it a try anyway. So this combined with a microfiber towel uh, will be able to give us result if the, uh, the product can dissolve the, micro, the, uh, the milk spotting, but I don't think it can. The other thing is uh, that would work, but I'm not gonna use is an eraser. Uh, so erasers are able to uh, remove milk spotting. The, the issue with it is that they scratch the coin doing it. So because of that, I think it's a bad way of removing uh, milk spotting, so I, I would never use it, but, uh, but that works. So if you're really desperate and like all of the uh, products I try don't work, uh, you could always use an eraser if you really want to get rid of the, uh, the milk spotting. So if you like this type of content, uh, I invite you to like the video and subscribe. Uh, and also, if you use the, uh, the bell icon, this will uh, make sure that uh, YouTube uh, notices you every time I post a video. Part 2. Should milk spot be removed? I guess there are a few reasons why you would want to remove them and some reasons why you would not want to remove them. Uh, the first thing that uh, I should cover would be what type of coin are you we talking about? So if we're talking about a bullion, like uh, a maple leaf like, like this, uh, or a philharmonic like that, um, those have no numismatic value, so cleaning them is not an issue. Um, so that would be uh, one of the type of coins that I definitely would not have an issue cleaning. Uh, if you're talking about um, coins that have numismatic value and that are collector's pieces, then cleaning them usually makes them lose value, so I would not be doing it in that case. The other thing is, uh, if we're talking about bullion, a lot of people are not interested in the milk spotted bullions, so they usually sell for less than if they were not milk spotted. So in this case, it would be an advantage to remove the milk spotting. Um, so in that case, uh, it, I would say yes, do it if you can. If it's not expensive and if it's easy to do, then it's definitely a good option. But in the case again of, uh, of uh, numismatic coins, you would get the opposite effect. Basically, you would remove the value from the coin. So then it would not, it would be a very bad idea to do it. Now the other factor is how much effort is it gonna be to clean them and how much value are you getting back? In my case, when I purchased these, I paid $2 less per ounce than the, uh, the, the ongoing price. So it's not a huge difference, but it, it is like if you're purchasing a lot of ounces, it can make a big difference in price. So I would say if the effort is not too difficult, uh, then it very likely will be worth the effort to do it. 
And the other thing, of course, is for personal enjoyment. Most people hate milk spotting. So if you don't like your coins because they are milk spotted, cleaning them would be a really good idea to do as well. Part three, techniques to use and cleaning attempts. Okay, so the first thing that uh, we should cover is that uh, I'm going to be using products by hand. But if you do have access to clean to polishers, um, these machines can do a ton more work during the same amount of time that you would be able to do by hand. So that would be a good way to do it. When we're going to try to remove the milk spot from the coins, pressure will be important uh, because this is how the chemicals can interact with the coins. So if you're not doing any pressure, it's going to be very difficult to remove. The amount of product we're going to use is minimal, so I'm thinking probably just a drop uh, for each side of the coin. And the sponge uh, that uh, I'm going to be using uh, is less abrasive than if we were to use a microfiber towel like this on the abrasive side. Um, but in either cases, it's minimal, so it shouldn't create damage either way, but I'm going to try both to see if there is a difference. And again, if you missed it the first time, never, ever, ever use a scratch pad on anything that can be scratched. So uh, these uh, abrasive pads are absolutely damaging to anything uh, that is shiny. <laughs> so you don't want to use them on plastic, you don't want to use them on, use them on, uh, on paint, you don't want to use them on anything other than what they're designed to do, which in this case is to clean dishes, um, or if you're to, uh, to clean the sink or something like that. But, uh, but on a coin, it's a no-no. Okay, so let's have a look at the first coin here. Just gonna zoom in a little bit. The camera is really placed oddly for me because I want him to work. So, so there we go. That's what it looks like. So the milk spotting on this coin is minimal. I have some that are a lot more milk spot than that, but I'll try the uh, isopropyl alcohol on this to see if it makes any difference. So just put a little bit on your microfiber towel. You don't need much of it. And scrub with a little bit of downward pressure so if there were any uh, fingerprints on that coin they're gonna be gone now let's have a look okay so let's see hmm Okay, can still see some. I don't know if it worked. Uh, like, I don't know if it removed any. It's hard to say. There was so little on it, but it looks a lot shinier now. I can't really see much of it if there's any left. Okay, let's try with a different coin, see uh, if it makes a difference on one that has a lot of milk spotting. Okay, that one I can't really see the milk spotting. Let's try to. If you see on the edges, it's hard to see on camera, but yeah. So there's some there, there's some there, some over there as well. So let's try to clean it. My guess is it shouldn't work. But we never know. side okay. let's have a look now yeah the milk spotting is still there the coin is clean but the milk spotting is still there so that didn't work okay excellent so uh, I, it's as I expected so let's use the first product here which is uh, Oh, I'm zoomed in, that's why. Here. 
So this is CarPro Essence. This is a very expensive product. A bottle like this is about, I believe, $30, something like that. Uh, and it's only available in specialty stores, so uh, you would have to pay shipping on that. So that would not be my first option, but I still want to try it. There we go. So, as you can see, I really didn't put much. This is probably going to be good for several coins. <laughs> so I'm going to speed up uh, this process uh, so that you don't have to watch for hours. But roughly, I'm probably going to rub the coin for about a minute or something like that using medi medium pressure. So I'm not pressing like crazy, but I am applying pressure. I'm going to do the other side. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of um, oxidation, I'm guessing, that came out. So it is working on oxidation. I don't know if it's going to work on milk spot. We're going to clean it and see. So once it's been rubbed, you know, you need to use a microfiber towel to remove the product from the coin. And now we're going to have a look. So you can still see some, but most of it seems to be gone. There's a lot more here, but there was a lot more than that. So it did work. Let me zoom in for you guys. Oh, yeah. The coin is, it looks a lot better actually. Which makes sense because these products are designed to shine up paint and metal. So I can still see like a tiny little bit of it, but almost all of it is gone. So I would say that product works. If I had worked it maybe a few seconds more, it would have removed everything. So that's that's one way to do it. So uh, with CarPro Essence Plus. Now let's try the other product in the same company. So this is CarPro Essence. one here essence so this one is a little bit more abrasive we're gonna see at the same time if it damages the, the coin or not okay so it's quartered on its own <laughs> okay so let's clean it up I don't know when the camera cut off my my phone only can record for 10 minutes at a time I should really get a camera to resolve this issue but anyway yeah so as I was saying uh, essence uh, as um, also uh, nano ceramic protection in it so it's like a super durable wax so if you use this on a coin basically it would be protected for life uh, against oxidation and uh, against uh, maybe milk spotting I'm not sure what creates milk spotting but uh, I believe that uh, having the, uh, the metal protected would prevent it from happening again okay so let's have a look and then Zoom in a little bit more. So that worked. Everything is gone. I can't see any on this side. And yeah, on that side, there's still some left. So I probably just didn't rub there long enough. But yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah, there's a, as I can see, a little bit more of it. Well, not more, but there's a little bit left over here. So I just probably didn't scrub long enough or well enough in that area. But on this side, let's see. Okay, now I can still see some here. So it made it a lot better, didn't remove it completely. Maybe I just didn't scrub good enough as well on this side because everywhere else it's gone. So I would say this product work as well. So that's that's a good option if you want to uh, to clean coins. 
Now let's go with the, the less expensive products. So this one here is uh, Meguiar's M205. This is a professional grade uh, polish for cars. Uh, you can get uh, its little sister. Basically, it's this product here as a... Oh, sorry, I'm just gonna zoom out. Yeah, so this product here, there is uh, another version called Ultimate Polish. So Ultimate Polish is very similar to this pro product here, except that uh, it's a little bit less abrasive than M205. So it would be probably a little bit, a little bit less uh, efficient at doing the work, but uh, very similar. So let's give it a try and see how it does. I think um, instead of using sponges, I'm going to use a microfiber towel directly. See how that goes. So again, just a drop. We don't need much. Something like that is plenty. So this one here, let's take a look. It has some milk spotting as well. Let me zoom out. That's the problem. I need to zoom in and zoom out, but yeah. Okay, so there is some directly on the queen's face, on her hair actually. And uh, over here, we have some around the edge. Uh, on this side, there's some on the, um, on the mousse directly over here, over there. So there's a, a lot of it on, on that coin. Okay, let's see how we can remove it. So this feels a lot more abrasive just by trying to work it. Not sure if the uh, sponge would work better or if microfiber towel will work better, but I'm guessing microfiber towel is able to get into the nooks and crannies of the coin where the sponge wasn't. So that might have been the issue uh, with the first two, uh, why there was some left. Oh yeah, you can see a big difference. Look at that, it's all black, so it removed all of the oxidation. I'm gonna use a little bit more because it feels dry now. Maybe I should have used the cleaner side of the microfiber, but yeah, it should work anyway. This is funny. It reminds me as uh, when I was younger, my grandparent had a, a brass table that we had to use brasso to clean. It's uh, the same type of thing. It's a uh, brasso is a polish for brass, and uh, yeah, we had to scrub like that, and it came out black as well. So it removes the oxidation. The difference with the uh, the polish with M two O five is that there's no protection on it. So once you've removed everything, it will not uh, protect the coin afterwards. So maybe the uh, cleaner waxes, if they work, would be a better solution because the, the cleaner wax will leave basically a sealant uh, on the coin. So it will seal the surface completely from oxidation. My guess is this will, will have worked a lot better, but we'll see. Yep. All right. Let's zoom in. So everything is gone. I cannot see any scratches. I don't know if you guys can see some, but to my eye, in this light, looks like the coin is perfect now. And this was, it looked horrible before. Okay, so that's a that's a 100% success on this one. Okay, so the next product I'm gonna try is uh, the uh, it's D151. It's called the Paint Reconditioning Cream. Uh, this is a professional grade product again, so it's not something you could probably buy. But if you go to a Walmart or things like that and you look for cleaner wax, uh, Meguiar's makes many of them. I can't remember the names, but um, but uh, basically a cleaner wax uh, is a basically no matter what it is, it's the same type of product. So this one is uh, is the one that I, I use. So we'll do the same thing. We'll use the microfiber towel. Just put a little bit on it. Okay. 
and yeah this coin looks horrible as well okay so this one is really 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 damaged so you see there's a huge spot here it's over there some a little bit here and on the other side as well you can even see it easily in the camera so over there all through uh, the air and the face on the bottom here the side so this one is covered so if it works on that you can pretty much be assured that uh, it's gonna work on pretty much any coin just put some on both sides and work it this in theory should do a better job because the abrasives are more pronounced in this than the polish I just used. And as I was saying earlier, the wax aspect, which it's really a sealant, we call it a wax because it's a protective product, but, but there's no actual wax in there. It's really a, a blend of polymer sealants. So the sealants, what they will do is they will fill up all of the um, micro pores in the metal and it's going to create a protective layer that will prevent air from touching the metal and then prevent oxidation. And also it will protect against humidity and other factors. The question is, will the abrasives be able to work as well within the wax as the polish did? We're going to see in a few seconds. I'm thinking yes, because I can see a lot of black on the towel already. We'll be editing this a lot, so you might see a lot of jumps in this video because this is a very repetitive process and like it's not necessarily something that's interesting to look at for more than a few minutes. So what we want is to see the results. Okay, I don't know if I removed anything or... Well, I should because the rag is black, so... This tells us that oxidation has been removed. It looks like it didn't remove everything. Let's have a look. Okay. Well, can you see some? It's hard to say because the lighting in here is really hard for me to look at, but see anything maybe when I do the editing I will see some but right now I don't oh okay here I see some okay so it removed pretty much all of it except this area here and a tiny little bit I'm sorry a little bit here and a little bit there so this is mostly due to the way I'm doing it I'm guessing like if I was on a flat surface and I could apply even pressure and everything should be a lot easier so for the next one I'll try it that way but yeah, it did a, did a very good job. And now the coin is protected. So that was for the other cleaner wax. Zoom out. Okay, and I'll uh, reposition the camera, I think. So this is the first uh, compound. So this is D300. So basically it's the same uh, abrasiveness as uh, Ultimate Compound. Um, I'm not sure if the chemical compositions of both uh, products are similar. If like this one has more cleaners, maybe um, we'll see. But um, but yeah, let's uh, give a try to those. And I'll reposition right now. There we go. Okay. So next coin. Zoom in. Okay. So this one you can see a lot of milk spotting on it. As you can see. this side as well very heavy all of this here and a few spot over everything so I'll put it on the table and there we go so let's see if this works better so I put a lot more than I wanted <laughs> Now, you see, like this, I can apply a lot of pressure where I couldn't before, so this should be 
very useful to remove knock spotting because I can just press down I'm sorry I'm trying to stay on camera but it's not easy there we go so yeah so you see all of the oxidation already that came out all right in theory this should be a lot more effective than the polish in terms of removing the milk spot but uh, we'll see if it's the case or not and from what I can see it's not that is crazy okay let's have a look mm, yeah um, unless I'm mistaken, it's still pretty much there. Mm. Yeah. Oops, sorry. It's a very odd angle. Okay. So it, it's a lot better. Obviously, it did a it did the job of uh, cleaning, but uh, yeah, I can still see some here, some there, and it's not as shiny. Yeah, so I would say that that compound is not a good choice. I would go with something else. Okay, let's try the next one. So the conclusion is that the more aggressive you get, le least effective it is. So what you want really is a, is a polish, not a compound. Cleaner waxes seem to work as well, but uh, I don't know if they work as well. So, so I will do another try, but on the table this time. I like to find one that's really bad because I want to give you a suggestion on what to purchase. I think this will probably be the winning combination. Uh, in the case uh, of you guys, you would go with you would go with uh, Ultimate Polish instead of uh, M205. But yeah, talking about the eight dollar product compared to the previous product I was talking, uh, I was showing you were in the thirty to fifty dollars range. So if this works well, I think that would be the best. I'm so happy that uh, the Royal Canadian Mint managed to fix this product, so the, the, to fix this problem, uh, so that the new Maple Leafs are no longer supposed to milk spot, and the new coins, I guess, all of the new coins from them are, are not supposed to milk spot. Took them quite a while to fix the issue, but uh, from what I understand, they are mint shield is working i have not seen or heard about a coin milk spotting uh, since they released it in 2018. of course it can always do it in the future but since it's a chemical reaction i would expect it to uh, occur quite quickly once the coin is minted not wait like 10 years <laughs> So the difference here is I'm using a microfiber towel instead of the sponge and I'm pressing I am playing a lot more pressure because the coin is on the table instead of in my hands. Let's see if it makes the difference. Time to test. Looks like it's all gone. What do you guys think? Can you see any? Looks perfect to me. And no scratches. So you could obtain the same result with an eraser, but it would all be scratched up afterwards. So that's it for me. I'm, I'm suggesting this one here. So if you want to clean, if you want to clean your coins, uh, just grab a microfiber towel. Good quality microfiber towels will cost you probably about a buck each. Like if you go to Costco, they have uh, uh, from the Kirkland uh, brand, 
they, they can they sell them in bags of uh, 36 and they cost like $20 in Canada. So it's probably something like 15 or maybe $10 in the US. Uh, so that would be a good way to, uh, to purchase it. that. Those uh, are the, the towels I'm talking about. And the uh, if you go to Walmart or uh, any of the big stores uh, where they sell uh, autom automotive products, just get the, the ultimate polish, not the compound, the polish. Uh, it's pretty much the same as this product here that I used and I was able to clean the coin completely. Uh, no, no spots left at all. It took about a minute to do both sides. So it's, uh, that would be the winning combination in terms of price, efficiency, and everything. Part four, answering your questions. Here are some of the questions that uh, I was asked in the comments and by emails. So the first one is, uh, what stores are good in the Montreal area? I have about 15 stores in my list that I call when I go uh, shopping. So these are the, uh, the ones that uh, usually have the best prices. The first one is called Le Comptoir d'Or. They're located on Montreal Street. They usually have uh, limited availability. So usually when I go, um, they have a few items, like a few gold pieces and maybe uh, one or two bars and like a few coins, but they don't carry a lot of stock, um, but their prices are good. Um, so usually they're below market uh, prices. Um, I was able to find stuff there at uh, really decent prices in the past. And one of the things I really, really like about that place is um, the owner has a Sigma Pro machine that's uh, set up to uh, be able to show you if uh, the coin that you're selling or the coin that you're buying is a, a real coin. Uh, so uh, the Sigma Pro, I talked about it in, in an earlier video, but basically it tests both the surface of the coin and inside of the coin and it will tell you if uh, one of the two values is not uh, correct uh, so you can know for example if it's a, if a plated uh, bar uh, where you have like a, say a copper core and then gold on top or something the machine will be able to tell you um, so this makes buying or selling there much safer because you're basically guaranteed that uh, whatever you're buying or selling is real uh, the other place I really, really like, and it's my new favorite, I've uh, purchased uh, three times over there uh, in the last two weeks, uh, is called MTM International. They're located on St. Catherine Street, and they have, as far as I can tell, they have the best prices in town. Um, the owner pretty much sells either at spot or just a tiny little bit above spot, uh, depending what it is. Uh, I was, that's where I was able to get the, all of the numismatic stuff at spot price and um, like the gold at spot price and everything. So um, I don't know if it's going to continue, but so far, every time I go there, they, they, the owner has very, very good deals uh, to, to, to offer. Uh, just as an example, uh, the last purchase I did was for uh, Maple Leafs. Um, so I purchased seven of them this week uh, at MTM. So uh, the Maple Leafs were selling at $34 at Kitco. Um, I called around town um, and uh, the best prices I was able to find uh, was $30. And then when I called at MTM, he was selling them for $28. So that's six dollars below what Kitco is selling for. So you know that's that's very good because pot price right now is around twenty three fifty, I believe, in Canada. So um, so it's still a high premium. You we're looking at around just a tad under twenty percent. But compared to everywhere else, is is a, a lot lot cheaper. Um, so in terms of prices, I think it would be hard to beat. And it's been like that every time every time I I uh, called them or went there. The other place that I, I uh, go to is called uh, Monet Unigrad. Uh, they're located in Boucherville. That's a real coin shop uh, compared to uh, like Le Comptoir d'Or is more of a trading uh, office basically where you can trade uh, cash and currencies and, uh, and, and metals and things like that. Uh, MTM International, uh, they do mostly auctions. They also do stamps, uh, they do numismatic stuff and they do uh, precious metals. And Manier Nigrad is the same way, uh, in a way, like he specializes in numismatic stuff, but uh, he also has a lot of metal available usually. 
Every time I've called him, of course, we have to take into account we are into the pandemic and that availability is really, really limited right now for everyone. So his suppliers are closed, so he's pretty much relying on people buying, bringing stuff to him to purchase uh, to be able to offer products. But um, like he had limited availability, but it was still good. Like I was able to purchase uh, maybe so far, maybe 50 ounces from him. Uh, it's just that you don't have a lot of options like if he has coins it's probably like if he has bullions it's probably be one or two types same for junk silver like if he has any he's probably going to be limited in that but but the prices are good i was able to get very good deals with him so i i always call him now when i when i'm shopping the other place is uh, the place i did the video with uh, a few months ago la monnaie d'échange in longueuil Right now, I would say it's not necessarily a good place to buy because I don't think uh, that the owner has any availability anywhere. Every time I call him, he's way overpriced. Like the um, last time I called him, uh, Kitco was selling um, the, uh, the maple leaves for 34 and he was at 36 So he was $2 over and I was able to find him at 28 if you remember. So uh, that's $8 over the lowest price that I could find. So I think right now is not necessarily the best place to, to buy but uh, once things get back to normal and supply is open it might be different because he was able to give me really good deals in the past I was able to buy at spot with him it's just right now I don't think it's a good timing for him um, but I would still put him on my call list if I if I were you it's um, you, you can find good deals there from time to time the other place is a place I purchased uh, three times as well during the pandemic, uh, and it's called uh, Montreal Goldstock. Uh, they're located downtown Montreal in the same building as Kitco. Um, so again, he has very limited availability. So usually you will have say one or two gold bars or a maple leaf and a bar or something like that in stock, but he doesn't carry um, any fractional gold. It's always like full ounces. Uh, and uh, in terms of silver, when he has any, because often he doesn't have anything, when he has any, it's probably just going to be one product, like uh, one type of bar or one type of coin or something like that. Uh, in terms of pricing, uh, his prices were good. They were not as good as uh, MTM, but uh, he was still uh, cheaper than Kitco. So it's a good place, like if you can't find anything else, uh, there's a good chance you can find a good deal there. As for the other 10, <laughs> I, uh, I keep calling them, but uh, usually they either don't have anything or when they have stuff, it's always way overpriced. So I don't know. It's uh, I think some of the stores pr are pretty much only doing precious metal as a side thing and they're not really focused on it. Um, so if you're not buying numismatic stuff, for example, they're not necessarily the best places to go. But, uh, but if you look, um, uh, like there, there are about 10 more, uh, I would say, in Montreal. So there is a lot of options. It's just that uh, you have to shop around. So those are not ones I can recommend for now. Maybe it will change in the, in the future. Like if I eventually call one and he has great deals, then I, I will definitely let you know. So the other question I had uh, was, uh, I was asked uh, how I find deals at spot. So my process is uh, pretty simple. Uh, the first thing I do is uh, on the day that I decide to purchase, uh, I give a call to all of the stores in Montreal. So I call the 15 I have on my list, I give them all a call. I all ask them the same question. What do you have in stock in terms of precious metals, bars or coins? Uh, it can be silver, gold, platinum or palladium. And then they let me know. And they tell me, well, I have this, I have that, and it's X amount. So what I do is I do a list and I decide what I want to purchase from that list, basically. And then I go to the place that seems to have the best price and I try to find the best deal I can. Uh, and often, so yeah, so maybe half the time I'm gonna be able to find either at spot or, below, or just a little bit above spot. The rest of the time I can find a better deal than, uh, than what I can purchase online. So local coin shops are the way to go in terms of finding good prices. The, the only issue with them usually is that uh, if you're looking for very specific things, uh, it will be difficult. Like if you decide like I want, I don't know, silver eagles or I want uh, kangaroos or whatever you, you like stacking, uh, there's a very good chance you won't be able to find it. And if you do, it might not be the best price. So 
Uh, so you have to be flexible in terms of what you're willing to purchase. Personally, my purchases are always done depending on the premiums. So if I can find something at spot price, that's what I'm purchasing. It doesn't matter the metal. Like, uh, let's say I have $500 available and uh, the best premium I can find is gold, then I'm going to purchase gold. And if I have, uh, you know, don't, if I don't have enough for gold, then I'm going to go for whatever I can purchase with the lowest premium. So uh, what I, I think I'm going to do, guys, is uh, I'm going to give you, avail I'm going to put my, uh, my Excel spreadsheet in the link in the, the box below so that you can download it. My uh, Excel spreadsheet is used to track my stack and it's also used to calculate premiums and take note of them. So still uh, some of those coins are still milk spotted a little bit. They all improved, but not completely. And uh, so when I purchase online, I do the exact same thing. Uh, usually now when I purchase online, it's because I want something specific. So for example, if I want uh, a Kraken coin or if I want a Queen's Beast coin or anything that I don't have in my collection and I want to add to my collection. Uh, so I go on all of the online dealers and I make note of uh, the prices they are charging. Uh, and of course I calculate the uh, shipping cost because it can vary greatly from one site to the other. And then I make my decision and I purchase. So that will be it for this week in terms of questions that I'm going to be answering. I took a long, a long time on these two. So if you have any questions uh, for me, feel free to put them in the description below so uh, that uh, I can read them. And I will be covering, uh, I will be adding uh, a question period at the end of each of my videos. So uh, that will be a weekly thing now. Part five, conclusion and survey about future content. So if you haven't liked the video yet and uh, you haven't subscribed to the channel, I invite you to do so. And if you hit the bell icon, of course, it will allow you to be informed about content when it comes out. So this week I'm really hoping to get my package from Silver Torch 66. If I do, I will be able to do a full stack video update next Saturday. If not, I will do something else. He did receive my package last week, so I have high hopes that uh, Iz will get to, to me uh, shortly. So here's my question to you. What content would you like me to cover? Let me know in the comments below. Also, remember that when I put my membership program in place and start doing monthly giveaways, each comment on videos will be an entry for you to win during the giveaways. So it's, uh, it's a good way for me to give back to the people who help uh, the channel by commenting and liking. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have not watched uh, this video yet, uh, I think you will enjoy it. Uh, so the video is buy silver at spot price. It gives you more information on about how to find good deals. So that's it. See you next week.